Hi, I'm Natalie Graham and this is Inside Out South East. Now, railway staff in our region often have to deal with badly behaved, sometimes even violent passengers. That can all have a detrimental effect on their mental health. So who can they turn to for help? I've been certainly threatened to be stabbed more than uh, more than one occasion. Um, I have, I've had someone on my train threatening to kill people. Um, that individual, I removed a knife from him. Um, you deal with it as a professional, and it's afterwards you think of the implications of what you've just been through. 180 stations over a thousand miles of track. Running the Southeastern Rail Network presents huge challenges. And don't raise your voice at me, young man. So you're, you're being recorded on audio. Challenges like dealing with abusive passengers. Oi, oi, oi. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I'm gonna push you. Chill out. Right, this is now being recorded visually and audibly. That was on, that was on. Remember your face? I know my face. I'm gonna get you. Right. If you want on that camera right now, you little Working on the railways can be very stressful. Staff are having to deal with increasing levels of violence from passengers. They're also having to deal with very vulnerable people with mental health issues, some of whom are suicidal. Good afternoon, any more tickets please? Key card there, that's fine sir, thank you. Train manager Neil Chapman developed post-traumatic stress disorder. I went through what I call my three weeks of hell. Um, it started where I had somebody, an attempted suicide in front of my train. After that, about a week later, I'd woken somebody up and fallen asleep on the train. He'd missed his stop and of course somehow that was my fault. When I told him he'd have to get off the train, he actually says, you get off and grabbed me by the scuffed the net and physically threw me off the train, actually assaulted me. Um, and then over the next couple of weeks, it just seemed every other passenger was somebody giving me grief, didn't want to buy a ticket, wanted to pay for nothing and all that sort of thing. And I came very, very close to losing it completely. And I ended up taking three months off with stress. Depot manager James Holness struggled with his mental health after a relationship breakup and came close to suicide. While on duty, he came across someone who did take their own life at a railway station. And I did as much as I could to assist them, um, but it, it brought back all the memories of, of what I'd been through. Um, and, and it, you know, I almost saw myself as that person. And for you, that was particularly close to home for obvious it did. reasons. Yeah, it hit really hard um, after a while. And, and that's why I went to sort of seek further help. Two years ago, one man who works for South Eastern realised something had to be done to support his colleagues. Yeah, colleagues no, facing no, stressful to situations to like you, these yeah. caught on camera. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm going to drop you like you won't believe me. Up all my life, in jail, yeah? Right. You give a think I give a about a like you? Yeah. I'm not going home. You arrest me! As a train manager, Lee Wilcott Ellis faced serious violence himself. He decided staff needed help, so he persuaded managers at South Eastern to let him work on a mental health support scheme. We have volunteers who we've trained to be professional listeners. They make themselves available. Any colleague that has an issue, a problem or concern, they can actually ask to meet with that person um, and uh, just basically talk about what their concerns are. When someone's sort of, you know, got something going on and it's... And it's but you know, Lee's it's journey to becoming a mental home, health lead at one of Britain's biggest rail companies has been a long and painful one and even made headline news. Detectives have reopened an investigation into claims of sex abuse at a former school in Suffolk. One former pupil who says he was a victim... Once that night was by far obviously the worst because they'd, they'd come into your sleeping quarters and, you know, you're, you're a captive audience, basically. As a child, Lee suffered horrendous sexual abuse. Many years later, he and other victims went public with what happened, helping police to convict some of those responsible.
the easiest way to forget the past was to keep doing something and keep yourself busy. If you think 2009 was the year I was planning my, you know, to take my own life, which was quite a, it's quite a very dark and dangerous place to be. But thankfully, um, you know, my my need for uh, my need for justice and my need for truth was part of the, one of the factors that protected me from that, from actually going through with it. I sleep really well now. Now I've managed to sort of go back to the past, face up to it and, and deal with it head on. Um, I find now that I can sleep really, really well. Southeastern staff draw comfort from knowing that if someone like Lee can turn his life around, then perhaps they can too. After a couple of chats uh, with Lee, um, I came to the realisation that I could change the way I, I sort of was as a person. Um, he encouraged me to recognise that my mental health, you know, what I previously thought of as an illness, wasn't. It's just the person I am. You know, everything I said that was a negative, he managed to turn it into a positive. Um, and it, it was great, you know, I, I walked out of, I think it was our second meeting, we'd just been out for a coffee, uh, had an hour and a half, and I felt so powerful coming out of that meeting, I felt like a totally different person. Neil's mental health has also improved dramatically. Lee um, is a genius. Um, <laughs> I really think he has so much helped so many people. You can learn these things out of books, you can get your trained, qualified psychiatrists and psychologists, but because Lee's been through it, because he's experienced it for himself, it gives him so much more of an insight. And he saved my job, almost saved my life. I don't know how far I would have gone, mm. but with Lee's help, I'm just back to me. South Eastern told us that rail is one of the safest ways to travel, and the vast majority of their 640,000 passengers every day don't experience any sort of incident. They say inevitably there are occasions when incidents happen, both at work and outside work, which have an impact on the well-being of their colleagues. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard this South Eastern High Speed Service. Over the past 18 months, around 300 members of South Eastern staff have accessed Lee's programme, a programme which has allowed people like Neil and James to continue doing the jobs they love. And helping others now appears to run in Lee's family. At school, his daughter Maddie has become a mentor to other students worried about their mental health. I know that he struggled a lot in the beginning, but he's come so far and now obviously helps others knowing what he's been through. I mean, it's just amazing, really. The best thing to take from this is there is hope, there is, there is growth and there is the possibility of recovery. Details of organisations offering information and support with mental health are available at bbc.co.uk slash actionline. Or you can call for free at any time to hear recorded information on 08000 155 998.